coastline is constantly changing. Anyone who goes to the beach knows this, from changing tides to winds causing waves or still waters, to clouds blocking our sun. The beach is different every single day. But there's one change happening that we don't immediately notice, but is having a huge impact on our coastlines, and that's sea level rise. This isn't some distant problem of remote Pacific islands losing beach area. Sea level rise affects millions of people across the globe, including here in Europe. Sea level rise is an uncertainty that we need to cope with. The Netherlands, as the name says, is a low-lying country. Approximately 25% lies below average sea level, and 60% is flood-prone area. We are very fortunate to live in the best protected delta of the world, but we cannot take that for granted. It is an everyday effort to keep it that way, to keep us safe from high discharges of the rivers and sea levels. But where does all this extra water come from? Mainly from the melting of glaciers and ice sheets dumping fresh water into the oceans and seas, as well as a phenomenon called thermal expansion. This is when seawater expands as it gets warmer, making the sea levels rise. How do we know this is happening? Satellites flying high above our heads carry special instruments that measure the temperature of the sea surface. Others measure changes in the amount of ice melting off the glaciers and ice sheets. So we know how much ice mass is being lost from glaciers and ice sheets, and we can see the water temperatures rising, so therefore we can estimate the overall sea level rise. But how do we know for sure? Measuring in situ, or directly in the water, is difficult because of tides and waves. And even though tide gauges are in place, we must remember that oceans cover 70% of Earth's surface. That's 360 million square kilometers. That's huge. How can we systematically and accurately measure such tiny changes on such a huge scale? That same radar that's used to quantify the loss of ice mass from glaciers and ice sheets can also measure changes in global sea levels on a millimeter scale, and it can do this all over the globe. 25 years of measurements from these radars show that the global sea level is rising up to three millimeters a year on average and is accelerating. That may not sound like a lot, but think, at a rate of three millimeters a year, that's three centimeters in 10 years, or 30 centimeters in 100 years time. Let's look at the key word here, average. Surprisingly, the water is not rising uniformly across the globe. We have to take factors into account such as currents or gravity. Satellites can also provide this information to give scientists more data that they can factor into their calculations. In some areas, the sea level is rising by more than 10 millimeters per year, while in others, it's going down more than 10 millimeters a year. Sea level rise is a major indicator of climate change because it integrates a lot of parameters like, for instance, the melting of Greenland and Antarctica. We have um, an estimate of 3.1 millimeters per year over the last 25 years, but it's been accelerating in the last five years near five millimeters per year, so it's a strong acceleration. By 2100, we could have a two meter um, rise of sea level. Us humans try to mitigate the effects of sea level rise with infrastructure, like the dikes we see across the Netherlands. But the only real power we have against the rising seas is to examine the bigger picture of climate change and try to curb our emissions so that we can slow down this process of melting water, thermal expansion, and rising sea levels. If we don't make an effort to curb our emissions, it's not just going to affect our beach space, but impact the lives of hundreds of millions of people living in coastal areas who could lose their lands, their homes, to the sea.